Distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. This is the sixth video in my playlist covering all of inflammation and immunology. If you missed the previous videos in the section, you can click on the Stomp on Step 1 logo here to be taken to a list of the available videos in the playlist. This video is going to be covering antibody structure, antibody function, the differences between different antibody isotypes, as well as autoantibodies that are present in autoimmune diseases. Antibody is also known as immunoglobulin, often abbreviated as Ig. It is produced by active B cells called plasma cells. Antibodies are the most important part of the humoral immune system, which we've covered in a previous video. Each plasma cell makes antibodies that are directed against a single antigen or epitope. Then you have many, many plasma cells or B cells, and they all are targeted at slightly different antigen epitopes, which gives you the variability to fight almost any type of antigen you come into contact with. Antibodies have a variable region that recognizes the specific characteristics on pathogens, called epitopes or antigens. Antibody can be secreted as free-floating antibody, or can be bound to the plasma membrane of the plasma cell to act as the B-cell receptor. Next we'll go into the function of antibody and how it works. And you'll see here that I give it a high yield rating of 2. For those of you that aren't familiar with Stomp on Step 1, the high yield rating is a rating scale from 0 to 10 that gives you a rough estimate for how important each topic is for the USMLE Step 1 exam. Antibodies can have a direct effect on pathogens by coding the pathogen so that it cannot interact with cells because if a pathogen is totally covered in antibodies, it's very difficult for the pathogen itself to touch or interact with anything. However, antibodies primarily work via their interactions with other immunologic processes. So antibodies work indirectly most of the time by activating or somehow helping a different immune system process. Here's a diagram depicting a few of the most important processes that antibody plays a part in. Antibodies tag pathogens so they can be more easily recognized by the immune processes and the immune system can be activated either more quickly or in a more potent fashion. One end of the antibody binds to the pathogen while the other end of the antibody interacts with the NK cells, macrophages, or complement. You can see here that we'll talk a little bit more about structure in a second. But you can see here, while well, one end, called the variable region, is binding to a pathogen, the other end, called the constant region, can interact with the C1 complement protein. And once C1 becomes activated, it sets off the cascade of the complement proteins, which have multiple different ways to attack pathogens and activate other immune processes. Here you can see the antibody acting to opsonize the pathogen. The variable region is going to bind to the pathogen while the constant region binds to the FC receptor on the macrophages and in turn increases the phagocytosis and removal of the pathogen by macrophages. Here the variable region is binding to the pathogen while the constant region interacts with NK cells. When these NK cells become aware of the pathogen's presence, they can cause direct damage to the pathogen via the release of perforins and granzymes. This is called antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity. Antibody has a Y shape to it. The tips of the Y can bind two different antigens, while the stem is what interacts with the other immunologic processes that we just talked about. Antibody is made up of two heavy chains and two light chains. In this diagram you can see the heavy chains are in the blue color and the light chains are in the green color. 
antibody is broken down into two main regions, the constant region and the variable region. You can see here the variable region, sometimes abbreviated as FV, is in purple, while the constant region, or the FC, is depicted in orange. The variable region of the antibody is present at the tips of the antibody and is where antigens can bind. The variable region is made up of parts of the light chains and parts of the heavy chains. The constant region is primarily made up of the heavy chain, although the light chains do contribute. The constant region doesn't vary much within isotype groups, while the variable regions can have near infinite variability. The variable region needs this variability because it needs to be able to match whatever antigen it is targeted as. So the higher variability your body has between different plasma cells, the more pathogens you can be protected against. There are five different types of heavy chain. Each type of heavy chain is consistent within a subgroup of antibodies called an isotype. The different isotype groups are IgA, IgE, IgM, IgG, and IgD, which is pretty low yield for step one. Each isotype has unique characteristics and actions. IgM is the first type of antibody produced following the exposure to any antigen and can be thought of as the basic antibody. Its activation is helper T cell independent and therefore it can be triggered by exposure to peptide or carbohydrate, unlike some of the other antibodies. IgG is the main antibody found in the blood. It requires interaction with helper T cells, which makes it helper T cell dependent activation. And therefore it can only be formed in response to a peptide antigen in a host with a functioning T cells. That means somebody with a severe T cell immunodeficiency, like AIDS, is not going to be able to have IgG. This also means that if there's a carbohydrate antigen, you're also not going to have IgG present. IgG is the only immunoglobulin that can cross the placenta from the mother to the fetus. And for whatever reason, test writers love to put this question. IgA forms mucosal immunity and protects the body's orifices. It is found in mucus, tears, saliva, and breast milk. It prevents the entry of pathogens into the GI, urogenital, and respiratory tracts. A selective type of immunodeficiency called IgA deficiency is where you have low IgA but normal levels of other isotypes. It is common, but largely asymptomatic, and I'll cover that in more detail in the immunodeficiency video later in the section. IgE is bound to the membrane of mast cells. It plays a role in acute inflammation, and more importantly for step one, it plays a role in type one hypersensitivity and anaphylaxis or allergic reactions. I'll talk about type 1 hypersensitivity and acute inflammation in much more depth in their respective videos, but I just wanted to mention those here. These things are set off when multiple membrane-bound IgE molecules bind allergens and aggregate or cross-link, causing the release of histamine from the mast cells. Isotype switching or class switching is the process by which plasma cells change the class or isotype of the antibody that they produce. IgM is the first isotype of antibody that is created following the exposure to any kind of antigen. Isotype switching is how you get from IgM to the other different types. Over time, the initial IgM antibody can switch to other classes to take advantages of the characteristics of other isotypes and be affected in a wider range of situations. Following this isotype switch, the newly created antibodies will recognize the same antigen as the initial IgM and therefore have the same variable region, but they will have a different constant region. 
Primarily, this switch is going to occur between IgM and the more potent IgG. Anytime a question stem isn't specifically talking about mucosal immunity or anaphylaxis, it is safe to assume they're talking about IgM and or IgG. IgM is the dominant antibody at the beginning of the humoral immune response, and over the course of weeks, IgG becomes the predominant immunoglobulin. You can apply this knowledge to determine what type of humoral immune response is taking place. If you see mostly IgM antibodies, you know there is an active or recent infection, while a mostly IgG-driven immune response is likely the result of a recurrent or past infection. In this way, IgG is responsible for the immunologic memory present in humoral immunity. This is how the immune system reacts faster and stronger to pathogens the second and third time it's seeing them. Remember that the presence of antibodies to a specific pathogen does not necessarily mean there has been an infection with that pathogen. Somebody that has received a vaccine against the pathogen may have high levels of IgG against a specific part of that pathogen, even though they've never had an active infection. Hyper-IgM syndrome is a type of immunodeficiency where there is an inability to class switch that leads to very high levels of IgM and very low levels of all of the other isotypes. I'll cover that in more detail in the immunodeficiencies video, but I wanted to mention that here. Antibodies are supposed to be directed at pathogens. When antibodies are directed at the body's own cells, the antibody is an autoantibody, and they cause autoimmune diseases. There are laboratory tests available to detect these antibodies that attack the host cells, and the results of these tests can be used to help diagnose the autoimmune conditions. There are a lot more of these, but the ones listed in this table here are going to be the highest yield for step one. You have anti-double-strand DNA, or anti-Smith, autoantibodies present in lupus. You have rheumatoid factor, which is a antibody against the constant region of IgG, as well as anti-cyclic citrullinated peptide, or anti-CCP, present in rheumatoid arthritis. You have anti-topoisomerase, or anti-SCL70 in systemic scleroderma anti-centromere autoantibodies in Crest syndrome, anti-basement membrane autoantibodies in good pastures, as well as p anca and or c anca in various vasculitis disorders that we'll cover in a later video. Anti-nuclear antibody, or ANA, is a nonspecific autoantibody present in many autoimmune diseases. Its presence is not diagnostic of any particular disorder, but it can give you some general evidence that one of the many autoimmune processes is occurring. If you enjoyed this video and would like me to make more, please give this video and any other video in the series a thumbs up on YouTube. This helps other people find the series. If you would like to watch the next video in this playlist, please click on this black box here. This next video is going to cover the different types of vaccines live attenuated versus killed inactivated. Thank you so much for watching and good luck with the rest of your studying.